Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you as an absolute beginner how to do cloth simulations in Blender. Now what I mean by that is if you are new to Blender and you've never touched a cloth, you're an absolute beginner to cloth. I'm not saying absolute beginner to Blender because obviously you need to learn the basics of Blender before you get into cloth simulation, which is where you should start. So if you've dabbled in Blender but you've never touched cloth, this tutorial will show you very quickly all the basic things you need to know. Um, not the advanced things, but just enough to get you started. I'm even gonna show you how to pin any verts or points that you want, and so they don't go along, but everything else does. So very, very beginner friendly. I'm gonna explain it very, very well. Let's jump into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch Blender. Um, I'm gonna be using Blender 3.3 um, for this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch it with the Blender launcher. And um, what we're gonna do, is you're gonna see inside the Blender interface here, we have these default objects. Now, like I said in the beginning, this is not an absolute beginner's tutorial as in like absolutely new to Blender, but this is an absolute beginner's tutorial to people who have used Blender but have never touched the cloth system. So as you already know, Blender does have the default cube here. So let's make use of that. Let's actually not destroy the default cube. We're gonna click on it. We're gonna just tab into the edit mode. So we're now in the edit mode. And with all of this topology active, we're just gonna right click, we're gonna click on the subdivide button. And let's come up here and make it 22, or maybe that's a bit much, let's make it 13. Okay, 13 subdivisions. And then we're gonna go Shift, Alt, and S, with that all selected, Shift, Alt, and S, and round it out. And to make it easier for you guys, I'll enable my screencast key, so hopefully you guys can see what I'm pressing as well. So we now have a nice ball. And uh, what we're gonna do, tab back into object mode. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go shade smooth. Okay, now yes, we could have just added in a sphere, but you know, you guys learn something new about, you know, some tools hopefully in Blender and how you can approach things a little bit differently. So that's uh, why I did that. So we now have an object that we're gonna be interacting our cloth with. We're now gonna go shift A and to add in a cloth, let's just add in a plane, perfect thing to use, and we're gonna go G, Z, and move it above this sphere, like so. Now, the thing is with simulations in Blender, if we're gonna be taking a piece of mesh and deforming it with a cloth simulation, it obviously needs more topology. If we were to run this, it only has four points here to deform, and it's just gonna be like one solid face flopping around. So tab into edit mode as well, and we're gonna right click, and we're gonna go subdivide. We're gonna to go to a subdivision tab. And let's make it 12. Now, this is a very low, topology level for something like a cloth simulation. But because we're learning here and going through the basic steps, we don't wanna overwhelm whatever laptop or thing you might be working on, especially as an absolute beginner. So let's just keep it low for now. We're gonna tab back into object mode and we're gonna scale this. We're gonna go S to scale it. Now, ordinarily, I would actually scale inside of edit mode because when we do that, we don't affect the transforms in the same way, okay? But if we scale, in the object mode, we affect the scaling here of the object. And the problem with that is Blender's simulation system, specifically the cloth as well, will look at the scale of the objects in our world environment here. So it's important if you do scale in the object mode that afterwards you go Control A and you go and apply that scale. So Command A or Control A. And it's very important that you apply that scale. And these scale transforms, these free vectors, should be set back to values of one once you've done that. I know it's a little bit of a tedious point there, but I think you guys should really know that. It's important as a beginner because a lot of people get stuck with that and they don't know why things aren't working out. So now we have an interaction object. We have a plane that we can use as a cloth. Let's select our plane now. Let's go over to our physics properties over here in our properties panel. And let's click on cloth. And out of the box, it pretty much is now a cloth object. If you were to come here to you know your first frame and you press the space bar, it's gonna fall, right? But obviously, it's not interacting with the sphere. So if you wanna make it interact with the sphere or any object, you're gonna select that object, and once again, under your physics properties, you're gonna go up and give it a collision. And now it has the property of being a collision object. So now if we go back to frame one to start the simulation and we press the space bar, look at that. Now we have an interaction. and because this is a relatively low poly, we should be able to go to frame one, select our sphere, and then press the play button. And in real time, we should be able to move this around a bit and kind of see that happen, which is kind of cool. But anyway, we're not gonna do that now. 
The main thing is you now kind of know how to make something a cloth. Now, if we wanted to make this have different properties, what we can do is we can go over to our, with the cloth selected, we can go over to our physics properties and we can go down and there are a few things we need to consider here. Number one, let's just start at the top. The quality steps here determines the quality of the simulation, but obviously there's no free lunch when it comes to Blender. If you wanna get something more out of the quality, it's gonna take more processing power. So you can bump this up to 10 or 12 even, um, and then you can run that again. You're not really gonna notice a big difference at the moment because there's not a lot of topology here, but that will have quite an impact on it. But one of the things you're gonna notice about this cloth here um, you probably won't notice it now because we don't have enough topology. So let's just quickly tab into edit mode. Let's just right click and just subdivide one more time. Go to frame one, hit the space bar. You can see this cloth goes through itself. So one of the important things you need to be able to do is make it interact with itself as well. So under the cloth settings, let's go to the another important thing you should really know as a beginner. And if you go down, there's going to be something called collisions. By default, self collision is turned off. And the reason for that is processing power. It obviously takes a lot more. So by default, that's turned off. What you can do is you can enable that. Now, if you go to frame one and hit the space bar, it's gonna be a little bit slower, but now the cloth is actually interacting with itself and not just going through itself, which looks a lot more realistic. Keep in mind as well, with the collisions, that has its own quality steps. So if you can bump that up to a higher value, you're gonna get a bit of a better result, but obviously you can see things are slowing down a lot more now, but that is pretty much the main things you'll be working with whenever you're working with the cloth simulation. Um, what you have um, here is the shape. That's a bit more advanced. I'll just quickly show you guys because it's simple enough. Let's just look at the pinning for now. A little bit of an extra thing here. Let's just tab into edit mode and let's just select a vertex that we want to stay in place while everything else falls. In fact, let's just go to the middle here. Let's just select any vertex here in the middle. Let's go over to our object data properties Click plus to create a vertex group. And with that vertex active, let's just assign it. Tab back out. And now if we go back to our physics properties and under the cloth, we go back to that shape there. We can now come here to the pin group and you're gonna see there's that group. Click on that. Now go to frame one again, hit the space bar. And now what it's saying is everything except that vertex we added to that group is now gonna be simulating. And anytime you can come back in here as long as you have that group selected there, you can add in some more vertexes, some faces, whatever. You can just go ahead and just select a whole bunch of stuff. And um, let's just quickly do that. Maybe here on the edge and then go and assign it to that group and then go back to frame one, hit the space bar in object mode. And there you go. Now you've pinned the cloth. So that is obviously super handy. And for now, let's just right click and go shade smooth here. And let's just also go to a modifier. And this is the cool thing. You can actually add on top of this. So now you can add a subdivision surface modifier on top of this. Usually what I'd like to do instead is just give this a bit more subdivision in the edit mode and then go to frame one and then just hit the space bar. And that just looks a lot nicer. And the more you do that, you're gonna get nicer results. And on top of that, you can also go and add a solidify modifier to actually give your cloth some thickness like that. And yeah, that's pretty cool stuff. What if you want to bake this into the blend file? Let's quickly select our cloth. Let's go back to our physics and under the cloth again, let's go down. And this time we're gonna to go to the cache here. Let's click on the cache. And simulation start is pretty much where you want it to start. And the end is where you want to end. Now, obviously by default, it has one and 250 because that's the length of the default frames you have in Blender. So let's just make this 120 long. And let's just come to the end frame value and make it 120 over here as well. So we just have 120 frames. You can make it as long as you want. So between one and 120, we can now come here and obviously make sure to save your file first. I'm gonna save mine to my desktop. And then you can come here and click on bake. And now you can see it's baking this into your saved blend file. And now it's done. We've now baked this into the blend file. Now, one of the things you'll notice is once you've baked the simulation, you can actually now go and move that sphere and it'll just stay in place there. If you want to change things now, you'd have to select this um, cloth again. You'd have to go over here, back to the settings and delete um, the bake. Okay, that's the only way you can work it again. But sometimes you don't want to, sometimes you want it to be baked in. So now next time, um, I'm just gonna put that back in its place. So next time now when we um, open up the blend file, which I'm gonna quickly do, we still have that baked in. We don't have to run it again. 
So um, yeah, that's been a basic overview. I'm just gonna give this a quick color just so it has some um, viewport contrast to the sphere. It just looks a bit better. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial for absolute beginners when it comes to cloth in Blender. There's a lot more that can be said about cloth in Blender, but these are just the very basics, okay? How to get a cloth going, how to pin some things. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll put some example simulations on my Patreon, so you can check that in the description below if you want to join that, and uh, it'll have some different examples in a Blend file. So I'll see you guys next time, and stay safe.